thing we want to take a look at is some of the uh, really great tools that Final Cut Pro has for adding transitions and effects to your program. Transitions allow you to move from one clip to another clip in some more visually interesting way. We'll take a look at those in a second. And effects allow you to change the way the video looks in some way. You can colorize it, or you can speed it up or slow it down, or give it some sort of you know, funny, interesting effect like that. So let's start with transitions. We've been looking for a while now at some of this waterfall footage. And as we play through the clips on the screen here, um, the transition from this first clip to the second clip as it sits right now is just what's called a cut. It's basically an instant change in the picture. So each time you see a transition where you just have two clips butted up against one another, it's always a fairly hard, kind of abrupt transition. So some of the transitions we have give you a way of, of making that transition softer or, or uh, more interesting in some fashion. So to do that, I want to go all the way over to the right-hand side of the timeline over here. There's a little tiny button over here that looks sort of like a little bow tie, that little button right there. It's called the Transitions Browser. When I click on that and highlight it so that it turns blue, it'll open up a little window here that's called the Transitions Browser. Along the left edge of the Transitions Browser, you can see that there's all of these little headings. Um, if I click All, it'll show us all of the transitions that are available for us to use. If I click one of the subheadings below that, then it'll show us just a collection of related transitions. So this one's called Blurs, and there are six different kinds of blur transitions, or dissolves gives us four different kinds of dissolves. So you can either try to look through all of them, or you can just kind of narrow your search a little bit uh, by clicking on one of the subcategories like that. OK, now the, uh, besides a cut, the very first transition that you always see in the window here when you have all selected is cross dissolve. Even though all the rest of these are, are arranged here alphabetically by the name of the transition, cross dissolve is always at the top. And that's because the cross dissolve is probably the second most likely kind of transition you, that you're likely to use uh, after a cut. So it's pretty likely that in many cases you won't put any kind of transition on, but when you do, a cross dissolve is, a, is most likely the one that you'll use next. Um, to use any one of these transitions, all you need to do is drag it from the window here onto the timeline. If you hover over the transition, You'll also notice that if I just drag from left to right with the little skimmer across the transition, it uses this little graphic to show me what the transition is going to look like. So a cross dissolve is just sort of a gentle blend, one fading out while the other fades in like that. <clears throat> so if you hover over any of these, you can see a preview of what that particular transition is going to look like. OK, so to use a transition, I need to drag this onto the timeline. But specifically, I want to look for where two clips meet. So where I have clip 6 here and clip 17, I want to put the transition right on the line between the two of those. So if I want to transition here between the first two clips, I'm going to drag this cross dissolve across the screen here. And I want to position it so it's right over the line between the two like that and drop it. So notice now that there's this little icon connecting the two clips together. It has that same little kind of bow tie shape up at the top there. And that is the transition. If we play it now, we should see that same kind of gentle blend from the first clip to the second clip. You can see that it's a much softer transition now than it was when we first put it down there. Now, the transition can also be adjusted for length the same way that you would trim a clip. So if I zoom in a little bit here so you can see that clip or the transition better, I can grab the edges of the transition and stretch it out to make the transition longer. By default, they generally come in as one second long, but you can make them longer. And again, as I drag it, you can see two numbers there. The number on the left is how long the transition is now. In this case, two seconds and 17 frames, a little longer than two and a half seconds. The number on the right is how much you've increased the length or decreased the duration of that since the time you grabbed and began stretching it out like that. OK, so if we put a three or four second long transition in now, now it's going to be a really long, slow transition uh, from the first clip to the second clip. And 
that might seem appropriate for a, a show like this, which is intended to be really kind of slow, meditative, nice, uh, just to sit and calmly watch. Other kinds of things, though, a four second long transition would seem too much. So it's important that you think about the duration of these transitions and how they affect the pacing of your program. If you ever decide that you don't want a transition, you can always just click on it and delete it, and it'll just disappear and take you back to the cut transition that you had there previously. So let me go through that one more time. Let's say we want to put in a fancier transition than that. I'm going to click on the subcategory here that says lights and then choose one of the four or five options that are here. I'll choose this one that says light noise and I'm going to drag that and drop it right on to the transition point between those two clips. Again, I can put it on any one of the transition points. Now notice when I hover over the line between these two clips, clip six and clip 17, the second and third clips, it's not actually kind of previewing where that's going to go. That's because when I let go of this, it's going to pop up a little warning message here that says there's not enough extra media beyond the clip edges to create the transition. What does that mean? Well, when you trim a clip, you actually um, create a little bit of extra footage on the end of the clip, meaning that um, if I take the clip before I trim it and I butt two clips together, there's no overlap between those. There's no place where we're seeing both clips simultaneously. So when you do the transition, when you do that slow four second fade, you're actually seeing both clips on the screen at the same time for that four seconds while, while they're fading together. In this case, we put two clips on the timeline that are just butted up against one another so they don't overlap each other at all. If I click Create Transition on the screen there, if I say yes, basically, it'll, it'll basically trim each of the clips slightly so that I have some overlap, or I can create it manually by trimming the clips. So let me show you that here. If I click the Create Transition button on the screen, then it will drop the transition in where I've indicated because it's basically adding a little bit of um, overlap there. Uh, if I delete that, I can also create the overlap by trimming the clips manually. So if I trim the end off of that clip or I trim the beginning off of this clip, it's basically creating overlap. The length of that overlap determines how long the transition can be. So when I drop it in there, initially it's going to be a second long, but I can stretch it out here as for as much duration as I've created by trimming the clips. So in this case, you can see that I've now bumped up against the, the, that red line on the left, and it's telling me that this transition can't be any longer than three seconds and four frames, because that's all of the overlap that I've created between these two clips. So now when I play this, you'll see about a three second long transition that's a little bit different, kind of more interesting now. So the lights flashing across the screen there are the transition that we just put in. Now if I wanted a different one, say that I wanted to choose one of these fancier ones, and again, remember, you can hover over them. This one called Drop In makes the video drop in from above and kind of bounce. So that's much more of an attention grabber. May not be appropriate for this kind of a, a video, but I'll just drop this in on top of the one that's there. You'll notice that it highlights the one that's there. So essentially what it's done is replaced it. It doesn't add to it. It doesn't give you two transitions piled on top of one another. It replaces the one that's there. So now if we play through this, you'll be able to see the drop-in transition. Which might seem a little out of place for something like this where the video is kind of slow and relaxing. So there's a lot of different ones available here. I'll just show you a few of them. There are literally dozens of different transitions available, so you can spend an afternoon just looking through the, the different options. Um, but it's, it's really important to choose some that seem appropriate to the content that we're actually editing. Uh, a little editorial comment here, by the way. It's really easy to overdo the use of these transitions. If you just kind of randomly start putting them in between every shot on your timeline, it's going to be more distracting than it is useful for the viewer. So I like to think of dissolves, that cross dissolve that you saw, as being a kind of a gentle transition that's more gentle than the cut. So if you're doing a slow meditative video for like the one that we're doing with the waterfalls here, it kind of eases you into the next shot. It can also be a useful way of suggesting a change of location, like you're ending a scene in one location and starting a scene in another, or a change in time. You're ending a scene that takes place one day and starting a scene that starts the next day, something like that. Uh, or the fancier transitions are attention grabbers. You're ending a segment about topic one and starting a segment about topic two. 
but just be thoughtful about how you use these transitions because they can be more distracting than helpful if you overdo them. Okay, so that's the uh, transitions uh, browser, that little bow tie button in the upper right-hand corner there. Right next to it is another little browser that's called the effects browser. What the effects browser is designed to allow you to do is to add um, different kinds of effects, different kinds of filters to your video clips to change the way that they look. You can colorize them, for example, or do other things like that. So I'm going to click on the little effects browser. Like with the uh, transitions browser, it opens up a menu here, right in the same spot. And just as the trans transitions browser had, it gives you a list of all of the, the effects available, or you have different kinds of uh, kind of subcategories under that. You can add a blur, or you can add a color effect, or some kind of distortion effect, those kinds of things. So each time I click on one of these subcategories, it will allow me to apply that um, effect to your video. So for example, they have one here that's called 50s TV. And you'll notice if I just hover over that, it shows me what that's going to look like on the clip that I have selected on the timeline. Or I can add um, something that enhances certain colors and weakens others. So you have a bunch of different varieties uh, that change the way the color looks. Notice that particular one also has sort of like little sun rays that emanate out from the, um, from the brighter spots in the video. Uh, there's lighting effects here where you can add kind of a glow to things or highlights flashing along the screen. So there's lots and lots of different ones of these that you can do. The color tab, for example, will let you add a tint to the color. And this can be any color that you choose or just the ones that they have picked for you. So the CP one, for example, is designed to kind of emulate uh, old video or old television. Okay. Now, how do you use one of these? Well, you can just simply grab the, the uh, effect filter that you want and drag it onto the clip. So if I want to change the way that this particular clip looks, I can grab this and drag it on. Now, this is not a transition, so I'm not dragging it where the two clips meet. I'm just dragging it onto the particular clip that I want to change and dropping it there. And now, that entire clip from beginning to end is going to be changed by that effect filter. Now the effects can be doubled up, so you can add a color effect and then also add a lighting effect. Unlike the, uh, what we were doing with um, the transitions earlier, you don't have to just pick one, you can actually pick several of them. So I can take this one called Insect Eye, for example, drop it onto the same clip, and now I have a colorized filter and an insect eye, which definitely ruins the kind of mellow vibe that you get with this particular footage. Okay, so what if we put a filter on there and now we decided we don't want it or we want to change it a little bit? That's where the inspector comes in handy again. So I want to go to that inspector button all the way up at the top of the screen here. Now you might remember that we we're working on earlier with the audio, that little button right up there. If I click on that, it'll open the inspector window. Now we're looking at the sound tab. So I want to go to the video tab right up here a little icon that looks like a little film strip. Click on that. And now, because I, uh, if I have a clip highlighted that I want to affect, like I have down here on the timeline, it's showing me information about that particular clip. So it's showing me that I have a colorized filter applied and I have the insect eye filter applied. Now, you'll notice for each one of those, you have a set of controls below that that gives you the options that are available. So for the insect eye effect, I can add more of the effect, or I can take away some and make it less noticeable. And for the colorize effect, I can um, change the colors that I'm blending here. So we have kind of a lighter salmon color and a darker red color. So I can also click on that, and it'll open up this color wheel. The color wheel here lets me choose different colors. So I can lighten up the color wheel with the bar at the bottom and then choose different colors to map onto the screen here. So I could choose shades of blue instead of the red colors that we have now. So there's kind of a bluish shade, and I'll choose a lighter blue for the, the next color. So I can tint it to a variety of different tones like that. I can also just turn off the effect but leave it on my clip with the little checkbox right up there. So almost always when you add any kind of an effect to a clip, 
you can always go in and modify it by going to the inspector and seeing what options are available for, for that particular clip. So the inspector is an important tool and you should always be kind of aware that it's there and going and looking at it to see what's available for the effect that you've chosen. Okay. Now, so far we've just been looking at visual effects. We haven't actually been, uh, been doing anything that has any important sound in it. Let me open up our project here that has Emily speaking again. And we can abuse Emily a little bit and show you how you can also add sound effects uh, to your video. So let me go to our uh, timeline that has some sound on it. I'll add this clip that has John and Emily speaking here. And now if I go to my uh, effects window and scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll notice there are also audio effects down here. And again, they're organized the same way. You can look at all of the audio effects or you can narrow it down. There's an EQ tab, for example, um, and the EQ lets you do things like select certain um, frequencies of sound and enhance them or reduce them. So if you have a buzz in your audio, if you can detect what frequency that buzz is at, you can reduce it a little bit and you can improve the overall sound. There are also things like levels. You have tools there to allow you to even out the sound of, of audio that has a lot of really loud and a lot of really quiet segments. And you also have things like uh, voice. And voice lets you do things like uh, add you know, an, an interesting effect. You want to disguise someone's voice or make them sound funny. I can drop this clip, uh, this one that says alien on my clip. And now when I play it, we'll hear. Emily Vidal here at Metro East Community Media. And I'm John Woodson from Metro East Community Media. And today we're going to talk a little bit with John about. And there again, if you want to be able to adjust that, I can highlight the clip go to the inspector and go to the audio tab, and then here's my audio effect. You can notice right now it doesn't show any options, but it does show the word show here. If I click on that, it'll reveal the hidden options that are available there. So I can choose a few different kinds of sounds, and I can control how much of each of those we have mixed in to the sound. So I can make it pretty subtle, or I can add a lot of that sound. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit with John about our production services department. So, uh, John, can you tell me what is production services here? Um, and if you don't want it, you can s select it and delete it, or you can just turn it off like that. Another thing that you might find useful is they have spaces, and spaces allows you to add an echo effect to the audio, oftentimes popular when you're working with music. You can take uh, one of these, and you can add a sound effect that will add a really long Echo, that sounds like they're in a cathedral. And today we're going to talk a little bit with John about our production services department. Or you could add one that's a smaller room, like this one that says medium room, would also add an effect, but not quite as, as if you were in a smaller space. And today we're going to talk a little bit with John about our production services department. So, uh, John, can you tell So anytime you're adding an effect, you're always just selecting the effect, whether it's a video effect or an audio effect and then dragging it onto the clip that you want to affect, and then going up to the uh, inspector window, turning on the inspector with that button in the upper right hand corner, and then seeing what options you have for adjusting either the way that it looks with the video tab for visual effects, or how it sounds by going to the audio tab and then looking at the audio effects that you've applied to the clip. So that's just a quick look at uh, using transitions and using effects on your Final Cut Pro 10 timeline.